Hey guys, it's Anusha and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be showing you my quarantine favorites, including the TV shows, books, movies, and more that I've been watching and listening to this summer. So the first album I would recommend is It Was Good Until It Wasn't by Kehlani. This album, I've been listening to it non-stop for the past several months and I still am not sick of it, so that's probably a good sign. I definitely think it's Kehlani's best album so far. It's just really amazing, the sound of it, the lyrics are really great, and Kehlani's just really talented. So I've also been listening to Kiki by Kiana Lede. Kiana Lede is incredibly underrated and she's so talented, her vocals are amazing, and this album is just an overall 10 out of 10, no skips. The production, the vocals, everything about it is just an overall great album. Another really great album is Sweetener by Ariana Grande, and I know it's like two years old. I think it's two years anniversary it was earlier in August this year, actually. But I think it's like my comfort album. It has songs with healing and then there's like those sweet love songs. And it doesn't show off Ariana Grande's vocals as much as her other albums do. But I don't even think that's necessary with these songs. And it was such a great comeback album. A couple other albums I would recommend are Free Time by Rule and Singular Act One by Sabrina Carpenter. Another thing I want to add is I've been listening to a lot of slowed and reverb versions of songs. I think that might be just TikTok influencing my music taste, but yeah, it just it really changes the vibe of the songs that I've been listening to. And so there's tons on YouTube and there's a couple on Spotify as podcast episodes, but I would highly recommend you check those out because they sound really cool. Gossip Girl is one TV show that I've been binge watching recently. Quality wise, it's not very good. Like there are some plot holes here and there and it's not very realistic and it's extremely dramatic. But if you disregard that, it's super entertaining. If you want some drama, that's a great show to watch. It's kind of like Pretty Little Liars, but way better in my opinion. Instead of an anonymous source blackmailing them with their secrets, they're posting about it online and exposing them, and they're all like super rich Upper East Siders. Another great one is The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. This show is super lighthearted and funny, which is kind of surprising because its premise seems a little dark, but they kind of twist it so that it's super funny and hilarious and it's kind of cheesy at times, but it's a really great comedy. All the characters are super lovable and funny and ridiculous in their own way. You'll definitely enjoy watching it. The Vampire Diaries is one of my favorite shows. I just finished it recently actually, and I'm sure you've heard over and over again people telling you to watch this show, but they're not wrong. I mean, it's a really, really great show. It's filled with suspense and plot twists and there's like drama and of course there's like the whole fantasy thing with vampires and magic and all of that. I also love Parks and Rec. It's a really great and hilarious comedy and it's a lot like The Office, I think, where it takes something seemingly mundane like a paper company or the Parks and Rec department of government and turns it into like something really funny and lighthearted. And I think it is actually just as funny as The Office, if not even more, in my opinion. But yeah, it's definitely a different type of humor, but if you like The Office, you'd probably like Parks and Rec. I love all the characters too. They're all like super weird and <laughs> unique and funny in their own way. Finally, we have Middle Ditch and Schwartz, and this one's not really like the shows that I usually watch. I don't usually watch those stand-up live comedy shows, but this one is 100% improv, which is super cool, and they're both really good at it because it was hilarious, and there's only three episodes. I wish there were more. Since I've been watching so many TV shows lately, I don't have a lot of movie recommendations for you. One movie that's on Netflix, I think, is Set It Up, which is kind of just a cute story about these two assistants whose bosses make their lives miserable, and so they plot to set their bosses up together to make their lives easier, and then they end up falling for each other, and it's really a cute love story and just a fun thing to watch with friends. I also watched The Maze Runner recently, and I actually thought it was pretty good. It's one of the very few book to movie adaptations that did pretty well and was pretty accurate and even disregarding the book, it was just a good movie on its own. It was, you know, a good amount of adventure and mystery and action. The first one is Tell Me Three Things. It's about this girl who gets an anonymous email from one of her classmates 
And it's this really cute love story about them falling for each other online via text and sort of like the mystery about her figuring out who it is. And it can be cliche sometimes, but it was just a fun read. Another book that I would recommend is the Hate You Give, which is a moving but realistic story about police brutality and racism, but in a YA book for teens. And I think it really spreads awareness of the reality of the world and helps people understand at least a little bit of what's going on. Even beyond all that, it's a really moving plot and a really important story that I think a lot of people should read. Also, in honor of Rick Riordan announcing the new TV show adaptation, I've been rereading Percy Jackson and the Olympians series, and this series was my childhood. I grew up reading it in elementary school, and it, yes, it is definitely targeted towards younger kids, but I think anybody can read it. It's a super fun series, it's really well done, the plot is amazing, and the main character is lovable and funny, which is actually pretty rare these days. It's also one of the very few book series that have been really good from start to finish. So I've been meaning to listen to a lot more podcasts this summer as well, and I never really got down to doing that, so I don't have a lot of recommendations for you guys. One thing I would suggest is TED Talks. I recently discovered that they have TED Talks as podcasts, which is pretty cool. I think TED Talks are super interesting and really cool to listen to and learn new things. Another really great podcast is Wild Till Nine. It's pretty new. There's only three episodes out, but it's super entertaining. I've been listening to it recently and I just it's so much fun to listen to. It's run by this YouTuber and her boyfriend who kind of just talk about random things and stories about their lives and they give advice and I just really love their dynamic and their relationship and it's just super entertaining to listen to. So I've been using the Tombow Fudinoski. I always said it Fudinoski, but now that I think about it, it sounds wrong. I've been using these Tombow Fudinoski brush pens for a while now. They're just a good staple to have. I use them a lot in my bullet journaling and for headers, for notes, and for making cards. And it's just a good thing to have if you know how to do calligraphy. They come with two. One I think is a hard tip and one is a soft tip. I did lose one of mine though. I only have one. The Winsor & Newton oil paints are really good too. I guess I'm not the best person to be judging oil paints because these are the first ones I've ever used, but I've heard that they're really high quality and I didn't really have any problems with them. They're really easy to use and just overall good oil paints. So I've been obsessed with this Muji Mechanical Pencil. I think it's like 05. I don't really know why I love it so much. It's just really satisfying and I always draw with it. I don't draw with any other pencil. They were really expensive though. I think they were like $6 for one but I really love this pencil. And lastly, I've been using these Muji 05 pack of pens and they're just really high quality. They're really great. Another great staple for bullet journaling. They're really high quality and from what I can tell, they don't smudge really easily either. And they're just really smooth and really great pens. Thanks so much for watching my video. If you have watched any of these TV shows or read any of these books, let me know your opinions on them and then maybe we can discuss in the comments. And if you have any recommendations for me, I'd love for you to comment them below and I will definitely check them out.